So yesterday marking the third highest daily increase since this pandemic began. Safe to say that what the governor said yesterday is going to happen. We're going to extend this thing, correct? Well, when you, when you look at the reality, I mean, COVID has become a raging wildfire in San Diego, more than 200% increase in hospitalizations. Uh, every day seems to be a new record number of cases. Um, the, the, the reality is we have to, but we also have to, we got to dig a little deeper and, and find a greater sense of commitment uh, in order to turn the tide, in order to, to help preserve our healthcare system and, and get in place a, 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 a trajectory where we can begin to contemplate reopening more things instead of a trajectory where we're having to continue to have uh, closures. We were supposed to come out of this uh, stay-at-home order December 28th. Mo more than likely, that's not going to happen. A lot of folks are saying this stay-at-home order this time around is not working as well as the one back in March that I think in a month, California had things back then under control. What's different this time around versus eight, nine months ago, Nathan? Well, there's two things that are different. One is the, the severity and scope of the number of cases is exponentially greater. There you were talking about a brush fire. Now you're talking about a wildfire. Hmm. Uh, and we all know that, that once once you have thousands of cases a day, even if people stay home, they're going to transmit it to other folks within their same household. It's going to be harder. The second thing, Raul, is is most of the people, a significant number of the people out there saying that the measures that are doing are not working are advocating people to fight the orders. Uh, a colleague of mine, Supervisor Jim Desmond, routinely goes to restaurants uh, that are defying public health orders that continue to do indoor dining. Uh, that our own inspectors have said are not following the safety protocols and says everything's fine, everyone come out and do this. Um, and so, you know, we've seen a, a large ideological bent. We've seen a lot of folks uh, really just, just come into the notion that COVID's not real. We've seen people discount the deaths, saying they're not real deaths. We've had, uh, you know, and so I, I just think that that's complicated the ability to respond. The same folks that are out there telling people to defy the orders, not to follow the orders, that it's all going to be fine aren't really that worried about seniors or those with underlying health conditions or the vulnerable uh, are really creating a situation that's making it much harder to respond. Another difference from nine months from now is the fatigue. How do you, as a county official, address the fatigue of the people, just not just mentally, but within businesses and everything yeah. else? Well, we do the best we can. I mean, Raul, there, there's no magic solution. We can't just wave a wand and, and say, you know, look, everything's gone. You got to get up every day and, and we got to be in the fight. And, and, and at a point at which we are so close, uh, when we are administering vaccines, when we can see a path that's coming out of this, uh, we can't lose our will and we can't lose our way. Uh, you know, we have to get up and continue to fight. And again, you know, what we didn't have in June or July, we didn't know when, when, when there would be a path out of this. We didn't know when the vaccine would come. Uh, we didn't know how long we would be doing this. We know that we're not gonna have to fight this forever, but we've gotta fight it for a little bit more. And so much of the, the surge, 30 to 40% of the hospitalizations for today are tied back to Thanksgiving. Hmm. If we do the same thing at Christmas as we did at Thanksgiving, we absolutely will have a catastrophic January, wow. February. And so we just need folks, not forever, just one more time. We're talking about saving people's lives and we've gotta to come together and figure out how to get it done. I want your reaction to yesterday. They had the rally, the East County rally in El Cajon. Mayor Bill Wells of El Cajon, Representative Daryl Issa was there, uh, essentially saying what, what you said, County Supervisor Jim Desmond has said. So how do you react to that when, uh, quite frankly, the public is sitting there looking for our leaders for guidance, and, and there seems to be a 50-50 split right down the middle. The people don't know who to go with here. Well, it's irresponsible. And, you know, folks, I mean, Bill Wells has worked in medicine. He, he ought to know better. I guess he doesn't. Daryl Issa definitely knows better. Um, no, no one wants to put in place any restrictions. But but this is this is a question, you know, Raul, we, we lose sight all the time that we're, we're talking about more than 300,000 Americans have died uh, because of what we're going through. And that is with all of the measures that we've taken uh, and, and put in place. And so no one wants to close anything. This is an effort to come together as a community to try and save lives. Uh, if you have a complete collapse of your healthcare system, you're going to be in an exponentially worse place. And so folks can deny reality. They can claim that the earth is flat. They can go out and encourage people to risk their own lives and the lives of their family members. But it's not going to get us through this crisis. And, and I would love, look, the politically expedient, easy thing would be to go out and tell businesses, hey, it's all fine. It's all going to be safe. But we have an obligation. When you get elected, Raul, you have an obligation to make the difficult decisions to confront opposition, to do the hard thing. 
Uh, and, and we know what we need to do as a region. And we know that we do it to save lives. We do it to protect yeah. people. We do it to protect our economy. And, and we just have to do it. And so it's, it's irresponsible. It is contributing significantly to the massive spike in cases that we're seeing today. Uh, and I'm going to get up every day and do, do everything I can to have us follow science public health yeah. and common sense. Before we let you go, I know that this, uh, the, the, these latest stay-at-home orders are based on ICU capacity in the Southern California region we know is at 0%. The San Diego region, I think, went from 16 to 19 to 22, so we're well above that for now, for now. Uh, right. is, is there any opportunity or chance that we can ask to separate ourselves, to separate San Diego County from that Southern California region? That has been a point of contention Whoa. that we all got lumped into this big, giant part of California. Yeah, but I, I think, Raul, you got to look at how, how, how do we have any ICU beds available? We have ICU beds available because cancer patients are being told their tumors cannot be removed. We have ICU beds because people who need organ transplants, when you look at the massive spike in COVID hospitalizations, you see a massive drop in non-COVID hospitalizations. We are denying health care to San Diegans who need it because we don't have space because of the number of COVID patients. And our COVID hospitalizations continue to increase every single day. So I, I don't think we'd have a really strong case to make that as a region, we're, we're doing good. Uh, I think when, when you see cases continue to climb, you see hospitalizations continue to climb, uh, you see staffing challenges. I, I haven't met a hospital CEO yet who thinks they can get to the actual number of ICU beds they have and have them staffed. Um, and so I, I just don't think until we turn the the trajectory on cases and hospitalizations, we're going to be in a place as a region uh, to make much of any compelling argument in the state of California. All right, County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher, we thank you as always for the time. Appreciate it. Have a happy holiday. Merry Christmas. Thanks, Raul.